Hello, I'm Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town Television Show. My guest today, Lucas Block, Will Bullis. Are we supposed to say something now? You're not supposed to say anything okay. yet. Right. Um, together for 45 years, mm -hmm. yeah. um, their first two-man show together, Robert Louis Stevenson School, mm -hmm. and now 45 years later at the uh, Del Mesa, <laughs> uh, the anniversary show. Yeah. And so here we are. So let's talk about 45 years. And the name of the show is too old, old enough to, not too old to know better, but old enough to know better. Yeah, indeed. We're working on it. We're working on it. So let, let, let's start at the beginning, the Robert Louis Stevenson show 45 years ago. Well, I, we're going to have to back up to your opening inter introduction. When you say um, together for 45 years, I'm sure my wife is weeping at home right now. Uh, uh, because that she didn't, she didn't know. Okay, that hurts my feelings. I, I know. It's not, I should. Okay, yeah. uh, that's where I was going. Yeah. Um, but it was all happenstance. Um, Lucas was art director for a small firm in uh, Seaside, um, and he brought some artwork in to be reproduced. And I was working for Allied Graphics at the time, um, a little print shop, and I was running a printing press. Uh, I, Claudia and I had just finished art school, moved from Santa Barbara, California, to Carmel. Our paths crossed and something clicked. You were at the Brooks Institute. I was at the Brooks Institute in Santa Barbara. I think we that. moved in the area about the same time, 76? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I do remember because the bicentennial was going on. And there had a big There was a, a big, bison? There, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, up and down Alvarado Street, that's uh -huh. uh, the running of the bison. <laughs> yeah, you're familiar with <laughs> Yeah, that with. was good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, and he had never seen my artwork before, which is kind of interesting. He kind of said, hey, I've got this show you want to join in. And I thought, yeah, that's just what I need, mm. you know. But he had never seen my work, so it was kind of a shock when I found. We all look back with regrets, you know. <laughs> like, yes. Oh. <laughs> so let, let's let's start forty five years ago at the RLS show because you were starting on the language that you've both continued. Right. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And uh, and and you are not a natural pairing. No. You, you, you know. No. It, so you, exactly. You, you have a, you, both both a unique look, and both a unique how. style. I don't know how this happened. Well, I, I do. Do you? I do. The conversation started. The spark was Monty Python, and when we found out that we were mutual fans of Monty Python, it all of a sudden got under our skin, and we couldn't stop acting and talking like Monty Python. And I think that's where we really meshed on the whole thing. And then yeah. we started talking because we're, I think we're both avid television watchers, film watchers and so on. And then we started comparing notes about which was funnier, which was uh, uh, time limited uh, as far as politics or something like that. And it was, and then it's one of those things like even my wife and I do it a lot too. There's a phrase from a film that you'll pick up and you use all the time and you automatically elicit a laugh from each other. Okay, the rest of the world hasn't a clue what you're talking about. But as long as the two of you are happy, you know, it's, it's uh, like who you get confined to prison with, and, the, and I'm not talking from experience. It's, but I got, I got to choose this cellmate, okay? So every time I saw him, we start laughing. Uh, it's, and it's, uh, I thought it had something to do with my looks for a while. That's where so it how started. So how did the, how did the uh, work look together? Well, we had one side of the room was his, mm -hmm. and the other side of the room was mine. Mm -hmm. And we didn't talk to each other through the whole thing, so it didn't really matter much. But it was actually good because, for me, I had gone to school and wanted to be wanted to grow up to be an artist. But reality grow up being the, the priority. There. Yeah, well, that hasn't happened yet. But well, the artist part, I oh, think, I'm good time. There. It's still early. Yeah, but uh, I had to get a job. Everybody had to get a job, you know. And he had a job. He ran a press. I ran I, a printing I, press. I had, yeah. I had run a printing press. So we had a lot to talk about A.B. Dix, which are little, press, little tiny presses. Sorry about the word, yeah. but it was an actual machine. <laughs> and uh, so that started the laughter right away. Mm -hmm. But what I needed was I needed an excuse to, to paint more because working eight, nine, ten hours a day, mm -hmm. it's hard to get those extra five. So the show really forced mm -hmm. me to work again, and it was really the beginning for me to actually consistently produce work, and which is really great. And so you're you know, 45 years on, you're, you're part of a local history here now. You, 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 I if feel you, older. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't history yet, but right. it's history now. And, you know, retrospectively, um, 
you're, a lot of really good work has come out of this area that's part of the synergy of, of the people who have been here and stayed here. Well, the great part is living here, you, you get to do what you want. There's not a lot of pressure from the external so-called art world. It was more like, I do this, this is what I enjoy, this is what I'm studying, this is what I'm experiencing, this is what I'm developing. And I think that was really good for me, and I, I, I assume for both of us, because the, the living here has been great. And, well, and, and also, the, you do get the energy that you get from each other. It, it, community really matters in art. Well, it was one of those things where we developed our own little community because of that uh, camaraderie that we had together and still continue to have. Uh, you don't think alcohol had something to do with it? Eensy. Yeah. Okay. Just so? a, just a little bit, but I can quit any time. Okay. <laughs> and I, my apologies to anybody who's having a drinking problem. I've never had a problem drinking. Okay. It goes down very easily, but at the same time, we clicked from the beginning on. And people, it's uh, if there's a commotion in a, in the room. Okay. If it's not a bar fight. Okay. It's then you know you're in safe territory. But uh, people would come around and say, "What are you guys laughing at?" You know, and we would say the X, Y, and Z, and then we and they'd say. Oh, I think I remember that. And then all of a sudden they're pulled into that because there is a uh, level playing field insisted upon when you introduce humor. And if somebody gets that joke or, oh, I saw that movie, I remember that, I remember that tagline or whatever. All of a sudden the, everybody's on a level playing field, okay, and you're communicating even though it's silly, and I love being silly. Um, uh, the, the only one who I think it doesn't like the, the depth of silliness that I get into is after about eight cans into a six pack, I, my wife tells me to slow down. But at the same time, there was a connect and then also with an audience, okay? And we've done the same thing with the interviews at the Carmel Art Association and so on. And there is, and it, it feeds off of itself. You know, because you're a funny person, okay? Uh, I, it may so. not be intentional, but you're a funny person. And that wasn't meant to be an insult, but at the same time, <laughs> that's somehow you connect with people softer and easier. Uh, and it's so unpolitical and it's so unbiased, but it's, you, you, have, you rely on somebody else who is very specific and very successful at being funny, like the Monty Python group, okay? And then when you get people of like minds that connect with that, then all of a sudden you have a club. Well, you've been seriously funny because you, you brought humor into the work and you've been, you, you, you've dedicated to, you know, both of you have had a path that's been I, I don't know how it became fairly, you, you've, you created your language rather early. And you're, I and, think so. And, 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 yeah. and your language <clears throat> brought humor in. And, and bringing humor into the art world <laughs> is a very perilous journey because people won't take you seriously. Agreed, agreed. And, 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 and humor is really, <laughs> really difficult, and especially in art. Well, I, I think so, absolutely, because my still work, my work is still referred to as cartoons, okay, because people find that humor in it, okay, and they don't really consider it fine art, but believe me, at 72 years old, I really don't care. Um, you know, I, and I, I must say, I, I, it took me a long time to get it. it it's easy to dismiss. Oh, e for even sure. if you know, and, and then I, you know, again, my own personal experience, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the work and looking at it and going, mm -hmm. You know, you've got to really be good. You know, first, the, you're, you're a great draftsman. Mm -hmm. uh, the work is really tight. Your composition is really tight. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not parody of art. You, you're not a parodyist. You're, Very you're, seldom, yeah. You, you're, yeah. A, you're a humorist, so it means you have to be both a, a terrific graphics artist and you have to be a writer. And then agreed, you have to do agreed. that third thing, which makes it not graphic art and mm -hmm. not cartoony, to make it real art. And and that's a that's a tough trick. Well, it, but it wasn't. It, it was done, I think, as a natural happening. Okay, it wasn't something that I said because, uh, fortunately, it was uh, good money uh, that uh, uh, paid for my art education. Brooks was a wonderful institute. I started out as an art major at Arizona State University, and then I had a little hiccup there, and then ended up at the Brooks Institute in Santa Barbara and went from a 50 to 60 uh, to one student teacher ratio at the university level to the smaller school focused and the, our student teacher ratio was less than 10 to one, which was glorious because you got really hands-on 
uh, discussions, conversations, and so on, and you, your, your teacher could really focus on you, okay? So you could, they could bend you in the right direction. And I think handling humor, okay, is, uh, uh, it, after all this time, it's, it's become second nature, especially it incorporated in my work. But I, I knew I had to be a draftsman of some sort, okay, to get the point across because it was more than just stick figure cartoons, okay? And it was more than just New Yorker cartoons, although those cartoons are brilliant and the, the artists who create those cartoons are brilliant. But it had to be something to uh, nurture my fear of blending in, okay? Because I did not want to blend in. I still don't want to blend in. And I think Lucas helped me not blend in, okay, by his he has a very special circle of friends, more on the classical and very sophisticated level, as opposed to most of my friends don't want to know me or acknowledge me. And I understand that. Okay, that's a natural defense. But at the same time, our sphere, after 45 years on the Monterey Peninsula, and a couple more, maybe 47, uh, we are friendship and what makes these two opposite ends of the, of the spectrum. Uh, yeah, I'm not funny. You, uh, we know. You're okay. Well, let, let's, let's go to your work because I've, I've known I've known Lucas for over twenty five years now. Mm -hmm. God, yeah. mm -hmm. Amazingly, I just moved here. It seems twenty five years ago. Uh, yeah. But uh, again, what uh, what a commonality is you you chose a language, you stayed in in your language, mm -hmm. uh, and you found in a you know Lucas is a colorist. As the background will attest. As the background will attest. <laughs> and within this, he's been exploring this, ever-changing, ever... In, in other mm -hmm. words, you, you're, you, you found a way to express yourself in a, in, a, in a finite arena that is infinite. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I, think, I think, you know, the, the work that I was doing at the RLS show 45 years ago was somewhat different. It was much... <laughs> It was <laughs> it was still non-representational, but somewhat representational. But it was all about effect in terms of optical work. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the consistency, I suppose. Uh, I don't have a language. I, I mean, I'm, I was born in in a country that had a different language. Came to this to an English-speaking country, then went back to the other country, back and forth. So my sense of communication and language were very minimalized by that. I just was well, a, well, the color became your language. Yeah, mm -hmm. int intuition and color, and uh, our color became the language. Uh, just as, as a continuation of that problem of how to be, what, what is there to say? He's got a lot to say. I don't have a lot to say in my paintings. I'm, I'm, I'm more about experience rather than the words. I think that's what's fascinating about what, what Will does. He, he tries to get people to have an, a response from the work using using language and, and association. I just do it by pure Well, when sensory. I see, again, I, I, I taking Will's work as, as art and not cartooning right. caricature, I see words and paint as a piece of art. Mm -hmm. I, I see it as, mm -hmm. as, as a unified mm -hmm. piece, mm -hmm. not, you know, the, the words are, right. are, are there mm -hmm. as, it's a painting, mm -hmm. it's not, it's mm -hmm. not a, you know, it's not a billboard; it's a painting. Right, right. So you're you're both painters, mm -hmm. and you're both um, and and this is what the, the the real truth of this is is that as as we were saying before, is life is short and art is long, and it takes <laughs> a really long time mm -hmm. to get this much better. Agreed. Oh yeah. Agreed. And that battle to what I've seen in both of you is the struggle to get that millimeter. Mm -hmm. And that millimeter, mm -hmm. that chasm for the next millimeter is so well, hard. True, but also I think one of our biggest allies is persistence. With that okay. Now, Lucas and I, for all these years that we get together at his studio, we have a couple fellow artists that, that happen to drop in, and it's almost consistently every Tuesday or Wednesday most weeks. <laughs> That's how focused Once it is. While. Once in a while. When we feel when we feel like it. And uh, who's got a full bottle of wine? The uh, We never seriously sit down and talk about our art. We don't compare notes, we don't talk color, we don't talk uh, 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 humor. The humor comes in our relationship, okay? And sometimes there's a spark that I say, oh, that's great, I, you know, and, and I'll run back home and do this or whatever. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we've never examined each other's artwork, okay, and tried to break it down, okay. Uh, Lucas, as obvious as you could see his work, and if you go to his website and see a variety of his work, has always handled his artwork 
seriously, but also with the skill of a surgeon, okay? His ability, the way he wields an airbrush, he makes his own stretcher bars, monstrous things. Uh, it's all put together very surgically, okay? And it's absolutely perfect, and it's flawless, okay? And then when he has to sit and talk about uh, his artwork and why he does it, he totally ruins everything. Uh, um, uh, whereas mine, I rely on the narrative, okay? And I, it, it, I, I, I love images with a narrative that have a story, even if it's not a realized story. And by that I mean, when you walk in, you look at it and go, my God, what is going on here? Or if there's a relationship to a phrase or something, okay? I, one of my uh, favorite uh, paintings that I've done recently is called The Teddy Bear Picnic, okay? There's a 1927 vaudeville song written that was called The Teddy Bear Picnic. And it, is, it was kind of a fun little children's thing, but the last few lines would talk about how ominous the woods are, so don't go into the woods, okay? Uh, and pulling something like that and having the viewer take a look at it and say, okay, and the titles are all very important, okay? And read the title, Teddy Bear Picnic, they go, what's this all about, okay? And it's, so you get more involved and it brings the viewer in too. Um, although I have had the lady walk out and walk by me with her husband leaving one of my uh, major shows at the Art Association and he, the guy says, oh, I just love this guy's work. And I heard her say, and not knowing who I was standing at the door, she says, I don't think he's so funny. <laughs> So here I am today. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and it's a low, you know, again, there's a bit of madness in this. Oh, I hope so. I hope I mean, so. Otherwise, I, mean, I, mean, I think we're wasting our time. Uh, in, in, in painting, you're, you're, you're alone. Imagine. It's a, you live in your head. You, you have your own myth. You, you need this mythos to keep you going. Um, you're not there working, going, geez, they're really going to love this one. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you're, you're, you're going, I'm really going to love this one. I mean, you never yeah. repeat a picture. You, and very, he, he, very He never seldom. repeats yeah. a picture. Yeah. It's, it's not, you, you know, that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about what's, how do, I, how do I live in this limited yeah. arena and how do I, where do you go from I here? Mean, I, I agree, but I also think there's something in an art, each artist, because all of the artists, people I know, and I know a great deal of them, uh, nobody in this room. But at the same time, there's always a need to, and they say, well, I, I can't do that. I couldn't get up in front of people and say, well, you're here and you've created your artwork because you want to show the world, okay? We're all exhibitionists. Yes. The, and we want to show or tell the world. You're an actor, you're a writer, uh, and you have to do that, okay? You take that away and you're no longer Mark Bear, okay? Sure. Uh, so. Uh, 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 so I think each of us artists have to when we do that. And I, when I work on a painting, I say, God, I can't wait to show this. Number one to my wife, okay. And if she does, if she just even shrugged her shoulders, then I know I've got a winner on my hands. Uh, and it, when Lucas finishes something, it, and I go to the studio, and I know it's a finished piece of artwork, I rarely make a comment, okay. Like, are you sure you want to use that color? No, you're, you're, you're not. You're not my wife, so it's, it's not. That's really, you know, okay. You know, but, I don't show my wife anymore either. Oh. <laughs> and I never show my wife I know, anything. No, no, <laughs> no, um, no, God help us. She, she was just, you know, I'd never get anything done. <laughs> I, yeah, last time I showed my wife anything, she goes, that color's horrible. <laughs> yeah. I said, yeah, but, but I got it on the discount. Yeah, yeah exactly. She, yeah. she goes, next time, pay retail. Yeah, 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 <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Yeah. I said, can I go that far? <laughs> Spurs it's, of the paint. Excellent. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a lonely life. Mm, it's, it's a, a lonely, lonely life. Yeah. And speaking of a lonely life, we're going to continue this at the Dill Mesa Center. Uh, the yeah. date is? The 10th? March? March 10th. March 10th. March 10th. I think the work goes up on the 27th or 28th of right. February. Right, right. And that'll be displayed for how long? A month. A month, think, or yeah. Or two months. A uh, month, month and a half, yeah. Something yeah. like that, yeah. Okay. One more time, tell them where it is, the Del Mesa Center. In Del Mesa Center, uh, Carmel. Uh, you, Carmel uh, Valley Road, 3 o'clock. Yeah, 3, three o'clock, right. 3 o'clock on the 15th. After the right, 10th. On, on the 10th. And it's all experimental on our part. We're going to see how this goes over. Yeah, I think we want to try and make it as fun as possible and laugh a lot and be even sillier than that. We've got more time to rehearse. Yeah, yeah okay. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. this is a dry run. <laughs> I'm Mark Bear. You're watching the Your Town television show. I'm with Lucas Block and Will Bullis. And see us live March 10th. We're out of here.